I'd like to introduce you to one of our technicians. This is Jeremy Edwards. Jeremy and I worked together in the emergency department for the last 11 years, and then he's joined us down here in the simulation center. And he's going to talk a little bit about the simulator itself and what the simulator can do and what you're seeing here. Okay. This is Sam. He is one of our Laredal mannequins. Sam is um, one of Anesthesia's favorite mannequins because he has a great, what they call, difficult airway. He has his tongue will swell up. He has what they call trismus, which is when his when the patient's jaw locks. He has laryngospasms. Um, just very difficult airway. So anesthesia really likes him because that's primarily what they're dealing with. Um, you can see that he's intubated, meaning we have a tube that's going down his, his throat into his lungs. And you can see that he has chest rise and fall based on the machine that's breathing for him. Sam also has carotid pulses. He has uh, radio pulses, femoral pulses. He's got an arm over here that's specifically designed for IVs. We can actually put fake blood into this arm and start an IV and, and the patients can get what they call flashback, which is when the needle goes into the vein, you can get a little bit of blood flashback into the catheter so that they know that they're in a vein. We can actually run fluids into this arm and we usually have it hooked up to a canister under the bed so that we can have actual IV fluids running through the mannequin. He has um, the ability to be defibrillated, which everybody has probably seen on TV, where they take this machine and they shock the patient. He's got posterior, so we have a, a real defibrillator, so Sam will absorb real real um, jewels or shock. Um, he can be put on the monitor, and you can see he's got a, a full monitor based up here with heart rate. I'll just shut it off now. Good for film. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you actually an MD yourself? No, I'm not. I was an emergency room technician. Mm -hmm. So we have heart rate, um, as well as the rhythm. We have what they call pulse ox, which is measuring the amount of oxygen in the blood. We have an arterial blood pressure, which is when they put a catheter into the artery and, and it picks up a blood pressure continuously. We have um, pulmonary artery pressures. We have antidal CO2 temperatures, body and blood temperatures, and manual blood pressures that we can continually, continuously, continuously monitor with, with Sam here. Uh, what else can he do? He can do uh, what they call chest tubes when you have a punctured lung. We can put a, a tube into his chest cavity here and you know allow his lung to reinflate. He can do what they call needle cripes, which is when he's having an obstructed airway and they can put a needle right into his throat here and we can breathe for him through his, through his neck here. Um, now the equipment behind you, would that be the same equipment that would be in an emergency room? It would be the same as they would have in an operating room for anesthesia, with the exception of it being a little bit outdated. Mm -hmm. But it, it, is, it is what they use. Um, anesthesia likes to have this machine here because it, you never know what you're going to run into outside of Loma Linda. So mm -hmm. they have the residents come through, their, their students, and they actually get a chance to use a machine that maybe they're not comfortable using on the floor, but they may run into elsewhere. So they mm -hmm. come in and they, they stop to troubleshoot this machine. It works the way it should work. I mean, we have I mean, all the different you know parameters that actually work on here. So um, they can intubate the patient and uh, figure out how to use this machine that they may not be using on a regular basis up on their unit. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we like about this is it has the different gas mixtures the gases that you'd be using to put a patient asleep up in the operating room. We can deliver those gases to the simulator. We can have some of the gases run out so there's a malfunction. Mm -hmm. And the person who is learning would have to figure out there's an issue with the gas and I need to fix that. It's not a problem with the patient, it's a problem with the machine. Or we could have something go wrong with the patient's physiology too. And then the student would need to figure that out as well and say, oh, it's actually the patient that's having the issue. It's not really the machine. Some of the other features you can see here as the bellows go up and down, this tells you how much volume is being delivered through this tube that's connected to the machine, down this tube that goes into the trachea, and then causes the lungs to expand. And so that's one of the things that it's important for the anesthesiologist to keep track of is how much volume they're actually delivering into the lungs. Because too much, you can actually lung pop like a balloon, and not enough, you're not going to be delivering enough of the oxygen or the other essential things that you're trying to get into the patient. 
and with that there is also a scavenger system here that helps to get rid of some of the, the products of metabolism that come back through the tube as the patient exhales. Mm -hmm. And then here's the oxygen sensor and you can adjust how much oxygen is actually being delivered to the patient in addition to the medications that are keeping them asleep.